So we're now allowing users to sign into our application, do all the cool stuff they need to do, but there's one problem. We're not actually storing their details in a database. This doesn't stop them from signing into your application and using it, but it's nice to actually store some information about them so we can you know, keep information about them. So inside of uh, MySQL, I have a database called Website. So at the moment, this is empty. We've got an empty set on all the tables. Let's create a new table. So the there are a couple of bits about this table that are unique to the way I'm doing things here. Because I just want to issue a simple insert into query, I'm not checking where the users exist before I do this. And the reason it is I'm going to use the on duplicate key update part of the query to basically not create a new record for uh, the same Google ID. So we need a Google ID field, which is basically going to be a unique field. So let's create a new table and let's call this Google users. And this is going to have three fields, an ID, a Google ID and an email. So basically the ID is going to be an auto incrementing ID as you'd normally find. You can use this to identify your users. That's absolutely fine. However, um, the Google ID is going to be unique in the sense that when we do use the on duplicate key update, we're effectively just doing nothing for this. Um, so, well, we are, but we're doing an update on the ID, um, matching the ID. A little bit confusing, but it doesn't matter. In a real world situation, you might be looking in your database and saying, does this user already exist? If not, don't run this following query. But I'm just running one query for simplicity and you might want to do this too. So the ID is going to be an integer. It's going to be not null. It's going to be a primary key and it's going to be auto incrementing. Now the Google ID is going to be a decimal. It's at 21 length. So we provide 21 and zero here. Um, it's going to be also not null and it's going to be unique. So that's where it comes in where we're not replacing this record because when a user signs in again and again and again, we don't want to create a new record for every time they sign in. Uh, the email, we can just give this a varchar of 255 maybe, have it not null and that's it. Cool, so let's uh, show tables, make sure that's been created. Brilliant, and let's describe Google users. Okay, so everything looks okay. We've got an ID as an int, not null, primary key and auto increment, Google ID decimal 21, um, and not null, unique, and email varchar, perfect. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to create a new class because we're dealing with dependency injection. We want to inject this into the Google auth class that we've created. So inside of classes, let's create a new file. This is going to be very, very simple. It's just basically going to be a simple database wrapper. Okay, so inside of DB now, we want to uh, create a MySQLi instance. You can use PDO, you can use whatever you want. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to have a private MySQLi property. We're obviously going to create a constructor. And this is going to set this MySQLi to a new MySQLi object. And we're going to pass in uh, the details for our server, localhost, root for the username for me it's root for the password and the database name which is website so we're also then going to introduce a query and this is going to take an sql string and it's basically just going to return this mysqli query sql that is it done so just to recap when we instantiate the class we're connecting to our, to our server with the details provided here we are uh, then storing this up here so we can use it down here for our query very very simple abstraction of the mysqli object in php so now that we've done that we can include this in here so require once classes slash db.php and we want to inject that into here so we can now create a new instance of that and inject it in so we need to accept this in here so this is going to be a type db so we can type hint it and that's going to be oops null by default so we can now say this db equals db and we need to obviously store this up here, protected DB. Cool. So let's just check we haven't done anything wrong. It looks okay. So now we want to deal with actually storing this. So 
at what point in the application do we want to actually store the user? Well, we want to store the user when they're redirected back from Google. Uh, obviously, because if we were doing it too soon, we wouldn't have all of their details. But there's a couple of things that we actually need to do before we can get any information about the user. So we're going to create a get payload method, which will get the um, attributes of the user. Then we can retrieve the payload from this. So let's just check this now. We're going to say um, this can be protected. Get payload. OK, so let's examine uh, a few things in here and we'll run that from let's have a look let's run that from here so payload equals auth payload oh, sorry get payload okay and we'll do a print r on payload and we will wrap that in a pre element just so we can see that a little better Okay, so at the moment it's going to error because we don't have a get payload method. Uh, sorry. Um, ah, sorry, it's a protected bloody method, isn't it? Okay, so let's set this to a public method. Okay, so this will be nothing at the moment. Now, to get the payload, we need to access obviously our client. So I'm going to say payload is this client. Now we need to call the verify ID token method and we then need to get the attributes from this. So let's do a return on payload and let's check this out. So um, wrong number of segments and token. Okay, so index.php. Let's get rid of this and let's sign in okay cool so let's do this instead of doing this here let's do this in here check redirect code because when we sign in we're doing this here anyway this get payload that's basically because the reason that we get that back is because we have provided a code that's already been authenticated with so if we sign in again and hit accept okay so we're finally there this is the payload that we need. It gives us some details about our account. It gives us my email address, if my email has been verified or not, um, blah, blah, blah. What we're interested in is this ID here, which is our Google ID, and we're interested in this email here. So inside of our get payload method down here, we want to get the payload from here. So we can see if we look at this, this is currently an array. So we can just call on the end of this payload there. So now what we can do is instead of outputting this, we know the um, names of the properties inside of this array. So we don't need to muck around with this too much. Inside of here, I'm going to call this store user. And then from there, I'm going to pass in this pay uh, get payload. You can do this in any way you want. It doesn't really have to be here. You can do a separate check. You can do whatever, really. But generally, I'm just going to call this store user this get payload. And the reason I'm splitting this up is because it's not a good idea to have uh, methods do more than one thing, really, uh, or lots of things. This is actually sort of, you know, quite verbose. It's doing lots of things after another, but, you know, whatever. So uh, the store user method. Cool. So this is going to be a protected method. as is get payload, let's just change that protective method. Okay, so to store the user, what do we want to do? Well, we want to construct um, an SQL uh, query. And in here, by the way, we want to accept payload. So this is going to look like the following. It's going to insert into Google users. We're going to choose the fields we want to insert into because we're not inserting with the ID. So it's the Google ID and the email. 
uh, the values that we want to insert are the following. So we've got a, a decimal, so we don't need to surround this in single quotes. It's payload ID. And for the second one, it's a string, so we surround that in single quotes. It is payload email. So on duplicate key, this is where the fact that I set the Google ID to unique comes in. This now will be a duplicate key. So on a duplicate key, update ID equals ID, which is basically the equivalent of saying zero equals zero. We're basically just doing nothing. Uh, we're maintaining the ID's integrity here. So we're going to say this DB query SQL. Remember, we stored the database up here that we injected into this class. So um, actually, before we do this, let's just do a echo on payload email or something like that, just to make sure we've got everything right. So let's get rid of this code. Let's sign out and we'll sign back in again. And we should just basically see my email address there. Cool. Nice one. And the reason we've got this modify, cannot modify header information is we're outputting before we use the header function. So let's put that query back and hope that I've not misspelled anything. And we'll again get rid of this code, sign out, and we'll sign in. So inside of here, we have got nothing in Google users at the moment. When I sign in, that should then store that. So there we are. Cool. So we've got the Google ID being stored and the email. Let's just sign out and sign in again and just make sure that that doesn't store that twice. So it should now still have one record with the same ID. Perfect. So we've now not only authenticated with Google, we've also stored that authentication information.